In our previous exploration of copper mining, we established that it is possible that the supply of copper has become the limiting factor in the transition to green energy. So how can we maintain our transition to green energy targets in spite of the looming copper shortages? Well, we could always consider alternate technologies that are not as high in copper usage. Instead of electric vehicles, we could focus more to hybrid vehicles, reducing but not eliminating the consumption of fossil fuels. These vehicles do not have the increased copper consumption within the vehicle, but it also eliminates the need for charging stations, energy storage and energy transmission. Likewise, consideration of the use of nuclear energy as an alternate to fossil fuels would significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and provide a continuous, stable energy source, which mitigates the need for battery storage options. Nuclear has its drawbacks though, with the need to transmit from a centralised energy production location using copper wiring. The long lead time and cost of building nuclear mining and power production facilities and the environmental considerations of mining and waste management. This is all additional to the community concerns regarding safety. An interesting development to address some of these issues head on is the development of small scale modular nuclear reactors. These are very small scale transportable reactors that can be moved from site to site for energy production, reducing transmission requirements and significantly reducing safety and environmental risks due to the small scale nature of them. But it's plain to see that even if we adopt these strategies, we will still require larger than forecast copper supply going forward, which means that we need new mines. Let's look into the interplay between government regulations, mining companies' financial objectives, and how these forces collaboratively steer investment decisions in future mineral production. Governments play a pivotal role in shaping the mining industry through their regulatory frameworks. Environmental regulations, labour laws, taxation policies and permit processes can significantly influence a mining company's operational costs and profitability. Countries with stringent environmental regulations, for example, may require much larger upfront investments in sustainable mining practices and environmental mitigation measures. On the other hand, regions with a more relaxed regulatory environment might attract mining companies seeking to minimise the initial capital expenditures. This comes at a risk, as it could potentially lead to long-term environmental consequences and reputational risks to the companies. At their core, mining companies are profit-driven enterprises duty bound to their shareholders and investors. Maximising return on investment is a paramount consideration that shapes their strategic decisions. Mining companies must carefully evaluate the financial viability of mineral deposits, factoring in operational costs, commodity prices and projected revenue streams. Long lead time to start up and a complex regulatory environment don't encourage rapid and significant investment into copper, which is required. A quote by Mark Mills, who is a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and faculty fellow at Northwestern University, is one reason that we don't have an expansion of supply commensurate with the demand that will come from the so-called energy transition is very simple. If you are a mining business, the magnitude of costs and the amount of time required 
put that business at extraordinary risk. You have to spend billions and billions of dollars to open new mines. We need to see significant shifts in the pathways that shape mineral production and investment. Currently, they are tied to the delicate balance between government regulatory frameworks and mining companies' financial objectives. And that's a complex dance. As Albert Einstein once said, if you want different results, you have to do different things. It's clear that the targets for the transition to green energy cannot be met by projected mine production of copper and other metals without a complete mindset change about mining amongst companies, environmental groups, governments and policymakers. We can already start to see a big shakeup in the way companies value assets and see their own future. The current BHP acquisition bid for Anglo-American is a good example. At the time of recording this, it is still in progress. Anglo have rejected the latest offer, but have announced their restructuring in lines with the expectations from BHP. So they're preparing for further takeover interest and they're streamlining their operations by divesting of De Beers, the diamond business, and also platinum and still making assets. Interestingly though, there has been much speculation that BHP were not actually attempting to acquire Anglo-American, but that they had bigger fish in mind. That the ultimate acquisition target was Rio Tinto itself. Things happen quickly in this world at the moment, so it's anyone's guess what will be happening by the time this episode gets to air in about three weeks' time. All I know is that I'll be watching closely. There's a lot riding on getting this right.